here all day trying to ram this up my nose, and it's not going anywhere. So they make special lubricant that looks like this. Surgical lubricant. And it's just like other personal lubricants that you may or may not have seen before, except they also have some uh, antibacterial properties so that we're not going to create an infection risk with this. So that's what it looks like. The reason that this testing sheet says uh, to verbalize this step is because once you put this stuff on the mannequins, it's really hard to clean up. It gets everywhere. And then later, your clothes have these weird stains on them. And you're like, oh man, this is gross. I don't like cleaning it. And he's doing it. So uh, what we'll typically do is every once in a while, one of these, uh, these mannequins won't take the, the plastic NPA anymore. We'll put the tiniest bit of mannequin lube in there, and uh, that's not so gross. But try to, try to not use this stuff. Okay, how to insert this? It depends on whether I'm going to use the left nostril or the right nostril, which way I hold this thing. I want to choose the bigger of the two nostrils. If you look around, most of us have noses that are slightly bigger on one side than the other. You show your neighbor, it's true, it's weird. Uh, you want to pick the bigger one, all right? And on, on my guy here, they're pretty yes. close because he's plastic. So let's pretend on my guy that the bigger nostril is the close one to me. If that's the case, the beveled side of the probing end is, is this side that has the cutaway. And I want that towards the septum, which is this middle piece of your nose. So I start like so, and then I just guide this in. And, uh, yeah, with a real patient, if I've lubricated that thing with the surgical lube, you'll be amazed. It's just like a zip. It goes right in. It goes right in. And then it just sits there. You don't even notice it after a while. All right. <laughs> if, if the bigger nostril was this one, the rule is that the bevel has to face toward the septum. So I actually have to flip it upside down to get it started. And you can see that like this is aiming up for his brain or something. So that's not going to work in the long run. But I start it with bevel towards septum just to get it started. And then once I get it halfway, I rotate. <sighs> And then finish the job. Why does it make you so mad? You think about it just in your. And that's all there is you. to these these adjuncts. All right, they're very very simple to use. In just a moment, I'm going to show you mouth mask and bag valve mask. What you should be remembering is that as an EMT, any time you are breathing for the patient, whether it's with a mask or with a BVM. Uh, you should have one of these adjuncts in. You should have that in. You want to try the OPA. If that doesn't work, pull that out and, and then give the NPA. Whenever you've got that patient in, you're giving adjuncts. If you're assisting respirations in someone who's still fully conscious and is just in respiratory distress, that patient doesn't need this. But anytime you've got an un unresponsive patient who you're breathing for, you should have an adjunct. Just a real quick note to the generic marine and soldier first aid kit.